Amen. Indeed, he touched you. He touched you. And after that touch, we've never been the same. And he's going to touch us more. Amen. Amen. Being a great expectation. I know our mama has prepared. Hallelujah. And he will touch us again. We thank God. It's always humbling to stand in this great pulpit. So I don't take it lightly at all. God bless our papa, Dr. Isaac Pencil, for giving us the chance to grow in this ministry. Amen. 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 Mama Cynthia, God bless you. Amen. I really appreciate you. I still can't believe it is me. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for the thing for Christ Oasis Ministries International for this year, the season of the Ecclesia. Amen. 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 Mama Cynthia told me we will be talking about that, and I was like, what, is, what specifically can I pull out of this um, thing? And glory be to God, last week after pastor, you have to always attend meetings. <laughs> after pastor delivered his speech about a vision for the year, immediately I got it, arise and shine, amen. amen. I said, that is the theme for all of for our retreat today. We must arise and shine. And uh, we'll look at Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, arise, shine. Arise, for me, is a mandate. It is a command. Arise, shine. Amen. And you are not just arising, you have a work to do. So when you arise, shine. Go forth and do what he has committed into your trust. And that is what Pastor shared this morning. We all have something to do. We all have talent. Whether it is one, two, five, ten, you all have something to offer. Arise, shine. So we are rising. It's a command. We need to obey this command by God. Shine. You have a work to do. God is not going to lift you to rise up. And he's not going to shine for you. You need to shine. Amen. Amen. So don't forget that. Arise and shine is a mandate. And we have a part to play. So as I said, we are loaded with talent, abilities, skills, gifts. We need to rise up with these things. And whatever God has given unto us. I strongly believe that if you rise up, heaven will back you up. If you rise up, God will back you up. And he will let what he wants you to do get accomplished. Amen. Amen. Every year, for some time now, in December, I begin to pray about what God wants me to do the following year. And... Uh, for a while, I will pray and I will tell myself that, God, I want to know what the theme for Oasis is going to, to be. And uh, in one way or the other, I get a little bit of it. So I, for the first night, I come prepared, ready for confirmation from pastor. And for about five years now, in a way, it comes to pass. Let me share what three words God gave me last week. Oh, sorry, last December, just before 31st. And that is what I will be sharing with us. In prayer, the first word I got was impact. Impact. And I was like, impact. God wants us to make an impact in our generation. We'll share more later. And then later as I kept praying, later in the week, I got another word, capacity. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I share all it on Facebook. So we need to make an impact in our generation. 
But to be able to make that impact, we need to be what? So we need to be full. We need to get to a place of where God wants us to be, capacity. And then for the first night, whilst um, Evangelist Jenny was leading us in prayer, I got the last one, access. The Lord just threw my attention to the pulpit and the word just came, access. I'm like, wow, impact, capacity, and access. I said, Lord, how do these three go together? And then I got it. Access. He's giving us access. He's giving us access to the to the kingdom. He's giving us access to the world. The world is a level playing field. How you use it is how you benefit from it. Access, capacity, impact. So then I rearrange them for this uh, program. Access. So what is access? Access is a means of approaching or entering a place. I remember that week I preached the first night in this uh, church. The week before, the Sunday, we were praying that the, God, the Spirit of God came so mightily. And I just caught it. The message just came unto me. You'll be, you, the Spirit of God will come upon you and you'll be um, my witnesses to Jerusalem and to the uttermost part of the world. I didn't understand that message. And whilst Pastor Gideon was preaching that day, God was so drawing my attention to this pulpit, but I didn't think about coming to stand here at all. I'm talking about access. And then that week, <laughs> Pastor Cynthia sent me a message that I should preach the Sunday. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is it. Hallelujah. Amen. Access. God has given us access to the kingdom. And once we are children of God, we all have access to the kingdom. We are God's representatives here on earth. So whatever God did or is, do, is doing, we have a, a part to play in it. Because we are small gods, as God has been telling us through our ministers. So Psalm, 20, uh, Psalm 82 verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High God. So we are gods. And if we are God, then we can do what God does. Amen. Amen. So the gift He has given unto us, we can do, we can use them. He has given us access. First Peter 2, verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Access. We all have access to this kingdom. And we thank God for the leadership of this church who give us the, uh, the opportunity to express the skills and abilities and all that we, are, we have in us. So we have access. So this year, remember that you have access and you need to use what God has opened up, given unto you to your, uh, 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 your advantage. So as I said, we also have the keys of the kingdom. When we look at uh, Matthew 16 verse 19, it says, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, you will be to be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth, it shall be loose in heaven. That is complete access. It's the same in Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. God has an open door for us. So we have two ways. We have a key that can unlock locked doors. And at the same time, he has already also opened some doors for us. We need to access all these doors. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. What is the first word? Hallelujah. We have access to the, to the throne room of God. We also have access to operate as children of God in this world. 
to operate in, a, in such a way that it will benefit the kingdom, it will benefit our families, it will benefit us, it will benefit the whole world. Access. So we have access to everything we need. We can unlock them if we go into the Bible, if we deep, dig deep into the Word of God, if we get closer to God, we will have that access. We can enter. When some people have tried and they have said no, we can enter and we will be successful. Amen. Amen. The second word is capacity. The maximum amount that something can contain, the amount that something can produce. So if the maximum, the full amount, the 100% to contain and also you can produce. So God has deposited, as I said, so much in us. And he expects so much from us. So what do you have? God expects to see you producing it. Whatever talent he has given unto us, he's looking unto us every year to produce it. John 14 verse 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works that thee, than these thou shalt do, because I go to the Father. Greater works. Hallelujah. Whatever Jesus did, we can do also. And because he's gone to the Father, we can even do more. Amen. Because there, is, there are more of us now. It's not just Jesus going from one city to the other. We are spread all over the world. And even as Oasis members, after church, we go to different parts of um, Illinois. We can produce a lot. We can produce a lot to affect our world. And we are capable. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, according to... 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. So we cannot continue to say, I can do it. We cannot continue to say, I am shy. We cannot continue to let God down because he's looking at us. And he knows that we are capable. He knows that when we get this mic, we can do something with the little we have. Hallelujah. So this is my challenge to all of us here. Whatever God has deposited to your trust, can you start using it? Can you start doing the little, little things? Hallelujah. Amen. We have that capacity. The bowl is in front of us. But is it filled? Is the bowl full? Are we full to that capacity God is expecting from us? So in order for you to access the kingdom, we must be full. And that is my challenge. We must make sure we are building our potential. We are sharpening our skills. We are making sure we are learning, right? We are, we are making good use of all the opportunities available unto us. That's way we can go through the door unashamedly. We can go through the door without being so scared. We can go through the door and do what we have to do because we, we go with confidence. We go knowing that what they have asked me to come and talk about, what they have asked me to come and teach, what they have asked me to do, I can do it. It's like they've asked you to show people how to bake bread. You, you remember your mom used to bake bread, and you know a little bit of it, but can you teach it? So then you have to find a way to learn how to bake bread so you can deliver capacity. Hallelujah. So this year is our year, the year of the Ecclesia, the year God is expecting every child of God to rise up and shine. He is opening the door for us. And even the unlocked doors, he has given us the keys. But are we ready to enter? Are we capable to enter? Can we do what he wants us to do? 
It means we need to learn. Build your capacity. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 2 verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved. Approved unto God. A white man that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. So we must make time to study. Study the word of God. And sometimes when we are talking about this thing, we limit ourselves to the church. It's not just the church. Study means study. Amen. So in your area of speciality or the, the things you are doing, the things God has committed to your trust, you could be a singer, you could be a, a musician, the same. You could be a businesswoman, right? You could be somebody who take care of uh, um, children. Study. Study about that uh, ministry. Study about that business. Study about that project. Learn more. And sometimes don't even limit yourself to just that. Go beyond it. Listen to tips. Read books. Take some steps. Baby steps. I was talking to somebody and the person was sharing how she has purchased a program that is teaching her how to sharpen her musical skills. That is awesome. That is what we have to do. Study to show yourself approved. Because God has given us the access. But when you are given the chance to perform, can you do it the way it is expected of us? I was thinking about a fig tree, and then it came on me, the, the fig tree syndrome. See, Jesus was hungry. He was expecting the fig tree to produce. But when he got to the fig tree, he was disappointed. There was nothing on it. Don't tell me it wasn't his season or its season to produce. Jesus was not ready for that escape, so he cursed the fig tree. Let's not be like the fig tree. Much has been deposited in us. Let's stop the excuses and start rising up to shine. It's a mandate. Hallelujah. Amen. We are rising up to shine in our church. We are rising up to shine in all of We are rising up to shine in our marriages, in our homes, in our communities, at our workplaces. I used to hide on Facebook with a, a name that nobody recognized in my school, you know? This is America. <laughs> so, and I didn't befriend any of my colleagues on Facebook, but hey, a time came I realized, you know what, this is me. Love me or hate me. I changed my name, I put a name that they would recognize them, and I started giving them friend requests. A lot of them are following me now. Some of them don't believe in what I believe. But you know what? They tell me I am encouraging them. That is awesome. Let's not hide. Let's rise up and shine. Hallelujah. In the next one minute, I'm giving you an assignment right here. Write down what prevents you from developing to your full potential. Write about two, three things down quickly, and then we'll continue. Two or three things. Or uh, don't tell me you are thinking in your mind. Write two to three things that you think is preventing you from doing that thing that you want to do this year. I don't see people writing. You can use it, your phone to type, test it to yourself. Or go to your email and email it to yourself. Two or three things that are preventing you from getting to your full potential. Hallelujah. One minute. We have a few seconds more. You don't have to tell me. Hallelujah. And at the same time, what is that thing you want to do? Write it down as well. What is something? Every year you should have a goal. One or two things, at least, that you want to pursue. Once you write it down, your mind agrees to it. That is what the psychologists say, and the Bible has already said. 
Once you write it, put it somewhere on the wall, somewhere every day, see it. It's, if you can go into four things, it is great. It can be spiritual, it can be business, it can be uh, uh, marriage, it can be finances, it can be health, it can be anything that you want to achieve for this year. Write it down and then put it somewhere on your wall. You can, we've already done uh, vision boards. You can go back to YouTube, watch about how to create vision boards and create a vision for yourself. And then back to that thing that is preventing you from doing what you want to do. Hallelujah. So some are lack of knowledge, and so we said, develop your knowledge. Develop your potential, capacity. Learn. Listen to YouTube tapes. Listen, uh, listen to audio tapes. Read books. I have so many books. If you want me to give you a book to read, just tell me. I'll give you a book and then you read and give it back to me. Amen. Amen. Fear of failure. We are scared. We are scared to fail. And that is taking most of us away from our purpose. This is not the year for you to say I'm scared. Afraid of what? Afraid of what people will say. They will laugh at you so you will not do it. God is there looking at you and he's ready to help you out. Amen. Amen. Just determine. Determine. Have that strong determination. I am an example to you all. See that quiet lady sitting there? That, that is me. Amen. We, have, we don't have to be afraid anymore. We have to come out. Come out from our shelf and rise and shine. It will take you determining to do it. Nobody will do it for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Procrastination. And this is my friend. <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to defeat it. Hallelujah. Procrastination. I remember the first video I made. I had posted the test on Facebook. And the Spirit of God said, make a video. Start making videos of your, your, your short, short messages. I was procrastinating. One day I was laying in bed. It was as if something pulled me out of my bed to go and make that video. And that is how I was able to defeat that spirit of procrastination. I'm still defeating and battling with it. Self-doubt. Self-doubt. As immigrants, hey, we doubt ourselves a lot, especially in this country with our accent. Oh my God. You talk and the people will tell you they don't even understand what you are saying. So if you don't take care, you hold into your shell. And at meetings, you will not talk. I remember when I was in school, at first, as a Ghanaian, I was bold. I would share my thought and somebody would say, hey, what did you say? That shut me down. <laughs> that shut me down. So I wasn't talking anymore in class. And sometimes people are sharing and you know how. You can't even share better than what they were saying. But I called. I was scared. I didn't want to hear. I can't hear you. So I, I called into my shell. If, if you don't take care, you call. You, you will not talk. Arise. Hallelujah. Arise and shine, O oh Lord. Limiting beliefs is one of the other one. And low self-esteem, like the grasshopper. You think you don't measure up, so you are always hiding. Arise. Amen. John Asaraf says, anytime you have a limiting belief at subconscious level, it will arise explicit belief of the conscious level. So anytime you are believing in something that limits you, your subconscious accepts it and your mind has to agree with it. But we need to take control of our subconscious and we need to believe in what God says we are and start doing what God says we can do. Amen. Amen. I'm, a challenging, I'm challenging us to go beyond the normal in this season of the Ecclesia. Psalm 81 verse 10. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of Egypt, which brought you out of um, Africa. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Amen. What does that tell you? We must have a shift in our mindset. We must stop limiting ourselves. We must be expectant of what God can do with us. We must desire for more. We must seek to add value to ourselves. We must make use of every 
every resource and opportunity that, that are available to us. And we have a lot, social media is, and now everybody, like Pastor says, is a journalist. Start something. Is it a book you want to write? Start writing every idea that comes into your mind down. Record things, email things to yourself. The internet is there. Workshop. There are so many free workshops on the internet. Make good use of them. Trainings, messages. Avoid the fig tree syndrome, as I said. And when you go home, you can read about it more. Mark chapter 11. Um, there's, oh, my time is up. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let's fill our vessels to full capacity this year. See, pastor will come and share all these great news. We need to start using them. We need to start using them. Every day, take one point that you want to go forward with. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 3 to um, 4. You remember the woman, the widow, whom um, the borrowers were coming to get her two sons to go and serve because she couldn't pay for, for whatever she was owing. The man of God, Elisha, met her and she said, he asked um, the lady, what do you have? What do you have? And this morning I'm asking you, what do you have in your hand? What do you have? The woman said, I have just a small vessel of oil. You think it's, it's a small vessel of oil. You think it's a small idea. Pastor Cynthia got that small idea of helping children with disabilities. She now has a book out of it. That small idea. Are you paying attention to your ideas? Are you saying, oh, this one doesn't matter? Listen to people like Oprah and uh, all the big names. That is how they started. They took that small idea, that small bottle of oil, and this is where they are now. Let's not look down on ourselves. Let's not limit ourselves and look at what God can do with us. Let me jump on to the last one quickly. Impact. Impact is to have a strong effect on someone or something. So the Lord has built us for greater works. He wants us to go to the world and expand and do all these wonderful things. He's giving us access. We need to fill our capacities, build ourselves, get ourselves ready and go out there to do what he wants us to do. We must exert influence in this generation. That a lot is being expected from us. Why are we so limited? It breaks my heart. Last two years when I realized, I'm like, oh, why are we limiting ourselves this way? Because we go to school, we get a certificate, we look for employment, and that is it. And then the money that comes in, I was talking to somebody last week, the money doesn't do anything. And people see you right now in my Facebook account, Messenger, I have about five people asking me for money. Because people see you and they think you have all the money in the world. <laughs> they don't know we are all on the same platform. We are all the same. Because the money we get from work is never enough. And we have all these people that are looking for, uh, for, for, for support from us. How can we do it? Because sometimes we genuinely want to help people. But can we go the extra mile, do something a little more, so we can get extra to help? So go and gather. Like the, the Elisha told the lady, go for more uh, containers. Go and borrow. Go and learn. Go and get yourself capable of doing something. And as she did that, her, 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 her bottle kept pouring. The oil kept pouring, pouring, pouring. And she had a lot. And I'm sure if she kept borrowing, she would have gotten more. And once she stopped, once she ran out of it, the, the container, that was it. But she was able to, to sell and pay for her debt, and her children were hers forever. So I'm talking on impact. Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. 
and greater works than this shall he do because I go to the Father. I think we read that already from John chapter 14, verse 12 to 13. So we have to let our light shine. We have to let our light shine. We are in charge and it's a command. We determine how much our light should shine. If you want your light to shine in just your room, that is how far your light will go. If you, like, you want your light to shine across your room to the neighbors in your building, to the people in your community, even to the world, as we are looking at, it will happen. Let your light so shine. We must be about our father's business. That is how we can make impact. And uh, Maris Moreau said, we are not here just to live. We are sent here to make a difference. We are not here to just survive, but to be to make an impact. We are here to make an impact. How far your life goes depends on you. That's the level of operation God is expecting from us. That is why we need to start moving and letting our light shine before men. He said, let your light shine before men that they will see um, <laughs> let your light so shine before men that they will see the goodness of God. Something like your work that is in through Christ Jesus. I'm not quoting him right. Um, John was a man just like us. I was surprised when I saw this verse in John chapter 5, verse 35. He said, John was a man that burned and gave a light. So John burned and gave light. And you chose for a time to enjoy his light. It means John was shining and people around him benefited from that light. Let your light so shine before me. How far do you want your light to shine? John was able to shine his light and it benefited his people. I was talking about Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good, good works and glorify your God which is in heaven. That is impact. And God is expecting that from us. So this is our challenge for this year. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel had a challenge. He said, son of man, can this born live? <laughs> Why will God ask a man that question? It's because he knew Ezekiel had the power, the capability to declare something. Son of man, can this born live? God is challenging us today. We need to rise up. We need to arise and shine. We, we have the open doors before us. And even the closed doors, we have the keys to access them. Let us fill our capacity, our lives with all the things that we need and access those closed doors, access those open doors to make the impact in our generation. God bless you, O Lord. I appreciate you. God bless you so much. Thank you.